Well, good evening, and thanks to all of you for being here for what is truly an historic day as we unveil a statue of our founder, John Tarleton, and christen our beautiful, newly renovated Alumni Island. Now, I have to add to just one thing that Kyle said about antics in the fountain. Pooh, standing over here, you need to know there's a camera right there on that building. So smile if you'd like to be caught with whatever it is that you might attempt. Well, you should know that tonight isn't just about a place or it's not just about a statue. Tonight what we are doing is we're celebrating an extraordinary man, a man of vision who changed the lives of thousands of students since 1899, and who no doubt will do that, continue to do that, for many, many generations to come. But tonight we're also celebrating the remarkable talent and the remarkable generosity of Kenneth Wyatt, Kathy Aycock, and Alpha Building Corporation. Without them, neither the sculpture nor this beautiful island would be possible. What I'd like to do is begin by telling you all a little bit about our founder, John Tarleton. I expect some of you know a fair amount about him, but others, this may all be new to you. And so I think to set the stage for what we're about to do, it's important to talk about our founder. You know, there's a lot of myth, tremendous amount of legend, and a lot of tradition that students have developed around him. We know very few details about his early life. We know a couple of things like where he was born. He was born in New Hampshire. We know that he was orphaned at the age of 10, and then he went off to live with his aunt, who apparently wasn't the most pleasant person to live with. And they certainly did not get along, and it was in part because of that that John Tarleton probably became the man that he did, because what she did not permit him to do was receive the education that he was promised. And that's incredibly important to the legacy that he provided to this university. So as a teenager, John Tarleton left his aunt's home and struck out for North Carolina and Tennessee. Now, he may not have gone to school, but I think one of the things that you will all agree is that John Tarleton was not an uneducated man. In fact, John Tarleton was, by all accounts, literate. He was very well informed. And I think, as you all know, he became a very capable and successful businessman. But at the same, time, the same time that he was very capable and successful, he lived frugally and began acquiring thousands of acres in the West by trading merchandise from his dry goods store in Tennessee for land deeds given to soldiers for the war service. And that indeed became an important part of his legacy. In the early 1870s, fortunately, John Tarleton decided to come West and see that land that he accumulated. And among the very important properties that he accumulated was 10,000 acres up here on the northern border of Erath in southern Palo Pinto County. And by the way, knowing how successful he was as a businessman, he got that for 12 and a half cents an acre. Like many tales of Texas, stories about John Tarleton are colorful and they certainly are larger than life. You know, probably the best known story about him is that he walked from Knoxville to Erath County with his pet duck, now known as Oscar P. How many of you believe that story? Now, I see a few hands. Of course, the poo, you have to believe this, right? Now, some people say that probably more likely what he did was he, he got on a train and he ate duck along the way. Hmm. Well, what we know of his life is the stuff of a Louis L'Amour novel or a Western movie. You know, 14 year old orphan boy makes his way across this great nation to found his dreams and to fulfill a great vision. One of the big questions many people asked over the years was why was he saving every penny and why was he investing in land? 
A biographer in 1938 speculated about that, the answers to that very question. And he said, and I think this is very important for who we are today, he said he had a singular purpose, and that was to help young boys and girls get the education and the skills that they would need to set them on a course for a lifetime. He wanted them to be more prepared for life than he was for his. And so upon his death in 1895, he willed a large portion of his estate for the sole purpose of starting a college that would advance opportunities for young boys and girls in this area. By the way, you should know, it wasn't just about this place, but he also left a significant amount of money to start an orphanage in Knoxville that still bears his name to this day. In 1933, there was a memorial program on this campus to honor John Tarleton. And featured speakers at that service were then the president of the University of Oklahoma, W.B. Bennett, and T.O. Walton, the president of Texas A&M. They spoke of John Tarleton as we know him, as a pioneer. And one, and this is what they said, one who experienced hardship to the end so that those who came after him might enjoy peace and human satisfaction. What is John Tarleton's legacy? That's an important question we need to ask as we dedicate this uh, statue to him tonight. His le legacy is this university, and it is the thousands of graduates that have come through this campus over the years. This statue is important for a number of reasons. It ensures that future generations of students, not just those that are here now, but future generations, know how this university began and the humble man who made it possible, John Tarleton. One thing that all of our current students, and I think all of our faculty and staff know, is that today, this university is committed to a set of core values that inform the decisions and guide the actions that we take each and every day. An important part of those that is, uh, is relevant to tonight is that they connect in a very meaningful way to the ideals of who John Tarleton was as a man back in the 1800s. This is how he was described by biographers, as honest, as a pioneer with a tolerant spirit toward others, a dreamer and a visionary, a successful businessman, a good citizen interested in the welfare of others. Well, we believe today that Tarleton graduates also take with them an understanding of what it means, and these are our core values, to have integrity, to be a leader, embrace traditions surrounding our founder and many other aspects of this university, to build communities based on civility and respect, to seek excellence, and to serve others beyond themselves. That's what John Tarleton was about. That's what we want our graduates to be about. These, these values honor our founder and certainly the university he began. At that 1933 memorial uh, service program, Judge Thomas King, who was one of the original trustees of Tarleton, charged the students to follow John Tarleton's way of living. And he told them this, and this is his quote, if you, like him, have an objective in life, and all your steps are taken to reach that objective, if, like John Tarleton, you would give everyone a square deal. If, like John Tarleton, you will never say, let George do it, but do yourselves. He really did say that, George Malik. If, like John Tarleton, you will never say, let George do it, but do yourselves what you can do. And if, like Mr. Tarleton, you never ride when you can walk and be self-supporting, you will, in the end, get the prize of any calling that you may set before you. That's what we hope for our students. And so these prescriptions of success, we believe, are just as relevant today for our students as they were in 1933. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this is our founder, and so I would like you 
to join me in thanking John Tarleton for his vision and for all he has done to make an education possible for tens of thousands of students in this country. Thank John Tarleton, our founder. Well, at the beginning of my remarks tonight, I said that uh, this is not only about John Tarleton, but it's also about Kenneth Wyatt, Kathy Acock, and Alpha Building Corporation. And I t have to tell you, we were absolutely thrilled that Kenneth accepted the challenge to create the John Tarleton statue. Kenneth is a Tarleton alumnus and the recipient of one of the very, very few honorary doctorates that this university has, con has conferred over its long history. He's an award-winning artist who claims, he's told me this, claims to be best known for painting the backside of horses. <laughs> but let me tell you this, in addition to horses, Kenneth has produced portraits, portraits of distinguished personalities from the Twelve Apostles to Mickey Mantle to the King of Dubai, and those portraits hang in museums, buildings, churches, and a variety of private collections around the world. But as important as is his talent is the character of a man, Kenneth Wyatt. Kenneth is a man of faith and a man of his word. He was a perfect, perfect artist for some, such a significant work because he reflects the core values of this university and he has a deep and abiding appreciation for the life and the spirit of John Tarleton. Kenneth, thank you for your commitment to this project and thank you for, on behalf of all the future generations of Tarleton students, for making this evening possible and for inspiring them by your creation. Let's thank Kenneth White. President Tavio. Ms. Acock, Mr. Boer, Dr. Wyatt, Mr. Cornegie, would you please do the honor of showing John Tarleton his new home on Alumni Island? 